So, like with Team Vision, uh, we started with this vision on how we can try to make uh, like the tool better for software engineers to be able to develop our job. So, we want, like at Google, like software engineer and Harvard engineer to be able to work together and co design chips. So, we started a bit like a job. What if there was an optimization flag inside like the compiler that we all use? that allow us to produce silicon design. So we are not there yet, but we made good progress. So like two years ago, we sent, uh, we sent a paper at uh, ICCAD about like the missing pieces to build like an open source silicon ecosystem. And so we identified that there was like for an open source silicon ecosystem to exist, we needed like an open source PDK, an open source silicon toolchain, a list of open source IP that people can reuse, and cheaper and faster manufacturing options. So this talk will be about what we try to do for two years to improve on those four fronts. So first, like the open source PDK. So we partner with two foundries, like Skywater and Global Foundry, and convince them to open source their PDK for their older technology. So here we are talking about like 15 to 20 year old technology for 130 nanometer, 180 nanometer. And those are like fairly old technology but still useful and even also very useful to, to get people to do their first design. And this year like something new happened. Like we started this initiative with partnering very deeply with those foundries. But this year in Europe there was another foundry called IHP who released their PDK without having us getting involved at all. So like they released their PDK under a page 2 licenses on GitHub and tried to mimic like what we've done with uh, the Skywalker and the Global Foundry PDK. And that's really what we wanted to do. We wanted to see the, the ecosystem here, but have it grow by itself. And like the involvement of Foundry and IHP so that this is working and that the ecosystem is growing without us. We also needed to uh, put a to chain together, and there was already a lot of tools inside the open source uh, ecosystem to, uh, to do design. So, like, there was this tool like you see, there was like lesson tool like OpenLane, and GTS streaming and DRC tool like Magic and KVM. And what we've done here is that we made sure that this tool like supports the open source PDK. So that you can use this PDK, this tool, and go from an RTL to a working design. And because, like I said earlier, Google cares a lot about software engineer and our engineer to be able to design together, we're also developing an high level synthesis tool called XLS that we put on top of this solution so that you can write algorithm in a language that's close to software and generate layer of it. So that allows you to go to an X file that has a syntax close to Rust, go to a very log file, then to left that file, then to a GTS that you can send to the phone. But then, like, if you have a GTS, it still costs a lot of money to manufacture it. And like, what we've done like, for the two years is that we, we run like, with a partner, Fabless, a, a program called the OpenMPW Shuttle. And so the rules of this program are very simple. So there is no entry cost. You don't pay any money to enter and see this shuttle program. And like the, as long as your design is open source and reproducible with the open source tool, like Google will pay for the manufacturing and Ifabless will send it to the foundry to manufacture it. And there is 40 projects selected on each shuttle. Like the design area that you have is 10 square uh, millimeter here where you put your design, and in every chip there is a little RIS-5 uh, chip, uh, a RIS-5 block underneath 
that's here to check that your design is working. And a few months later, you will get chips, a dev board, some record boards, so you can test your project. And so we run like nine of these shuttles so far. And we've seen there was like very little engagement at the beginning. We barely had like uh, 40 people participating. But from shuttle to shuttle, it grew in popularity. And the last shuttle that we ran at the beginning of the year had more than 150 submissions. And we see like submission and design submission from a variety of countries. So you have designs from the United States, India, you also have designs from Japan, and various parts of Europe. But it didn't come with, without challenges. Like at first, like for the first shuttle that we done, we identified like a design miss inside the risk files management that will uh, endanger the, the configuration of IO. And we thought that the, the, all the chips that we did with MPW1 were dead. We turned out that the community like, kind of get together and managed to tune finally like the timing voltage to be able to bring up the chip anyway. There is another issue with TA, like it took us a long time to get the shuttle uh, running and steady, and because of these design misses, we got like, uh, some of the run got uh, delayed by sometimes multiple months. And again, like the documentation, like we released it, uh, some documentation when we uh, initially released the PDK. But this documentation didn't get updated on it. And like, Google was in charge of maintaining the issue and the pull request from the Google history. And we got a lot of tools, but we are not that good at merging and updating it. But nonetheless, like, the community managed to pull up together to work with the documentation, to work with the command and the cables, and managed to bring up their chip. So we got like, a fairly successful bring up for the second shuttle. And here you can see like various pictures uh, posted online of people trying to bring up the changes. I want to showcase a few of those designs. So the first design that I wanted to showcase is the i5. It's a 32 bit RIS5 core with SD RAM with an SD RAM memory controller and basically a peripheral. It's actually done by a veteran of the industry. It's someone from Intel that has more than 20 years uh, of industry experience. But he didn't have any experience with using the open source tool or using the open source project. And one comment uh, that he had is that he never thought that he would be able to do that kind of work from his laptop uh, 20 years from now. And so that's like a good validation that the people had to Another like, project that we got that's very interesting is a like, project from a student from the Viterbank University. And he managed to put together an FPGA fabric on this processor. And so not only they developed like the toolchain for the FPGA, like a custom gateway to use this toolchain, but all of the custom fabric on top of an open source uh, PDK. And so there was so many ways that this project could fail. There could be a problem with the toolchain, there could be a problem with the fabric itself, there could be a problem with the process. And they managed to demonstrate like an end-to-end -end demo of, uh, of the graphical output from a gateway running on their FPGA running on top of that custom fabric. And like the custom fabric was not, not only including loot, they were also able to put together flip-flop and also DSP and be run on top of this process. Another like very interesting project was the one from the zero to a six course. So remember like we had like this uh, program up in the shuttle where we select like 40 projects and we manufacture them for, uh, uh, on a full wafer. So what they did here is that they, they took like one of these slots and put 16 projects inside of it. So they managed to do a MPW inside the MPW. So those are mostly to our people that, uh, that want to learn how to do their inside design. And that person like put an online course together without any relation to Google and started using like the MPW as an infrastructure for teaching the exam. And so using that, like there was like more, he managed to put like uh, like sixteen uh, devices together, and managed to bring up and verify the, that at least six of them were functioning. Another, like we also have researchers who use the shuttle to conduct their research, and like that's from one from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center who created like radio, radiation urban register file to for for space application. So he wanted to test that he can manufacture a memory that's resistive to sun radiation. He managed to prototype and verify like, his process like using the sugar program. And like, we also got like, uh, participation from Japan. And the first participation that we got was on MPW3. 
and it was for an 8 bit uh, retro processor with a DIY uh, uh, ISA. And like the person are here at this conference, and they are going to have a talk here about the fourth, fourth, third year. And so I encourage you to watch their talk um, and to watch what they have to say about the program. And I think they just managed to get the chip working today, so it's very impressive. And so, yeah, I encourage you to join like the open source ecosystem and community. Like we have an open source Slack community with more than uh, 4,000 members to it. And there is a channel there called Japan Region, where Japanese people uh, discuss together. And we have like a developer portal, developer.google.com slash silicon, where we introduce a program and showcase the project that we manufacture on this program. And then the blog post that explains a little bit like the philosophy between these people. And I wanted to show you a few like uh, initiatives that started and, and were created from this community. So first, like the tiny pro tempoid project is very interesting. So Google like run to, has run to shuttle for two years. Uh, but we haven't uh, announced like uh, the next shutdown yet. But uh, if like the company is also running a uh, uh, bad program for shutdown, but it's costing a lot of money, costing not a lot of money, but it's not uh, accessible directly to individuals. It costs like around like ten thousand dollars, which is like still a lot of money for someone lobbies to manufacture that chip. And what the timing? Uh, uh, the type of program did is that they divided this 10,000 dollar cost into 200. And so inside a single chip, they fit like 200 designs. And so now it becomes only 50 dollars to get started, like around Gosein, to start a design, to get a design manufactured. And best of it, like when you get the chip at the end, you get everybody's design. So you get like 200 designs in a single chip. And so they run their last type out with the chip 95 less program on the Sky 130 process, and they've got like more than 250 design uh, uh, submitted. And the thing that, uh, that uh, what was created from this community is like some tool to teach the ASI, the fundamental of the ASI. And so the CDBS tool is very interesting because like it's using a method process that has only two metal layer, but you draw like the silicon layer and the metal layer and the metal layer inside the web interface, and you see live like the simulation updating itself. So it's a very good tool to learn the fundamental of the device making. How do you make tools? And there is like a, a Japanese article, a tutorial that's written uh, about this tool, and we have it. Uh, we have a demo of this tool alongside with the NPW silicon on the booth. Uh, on the other side of the There is also a local community in Japan called Fishikai, and they have a, uh, their next meetup is going to be on uh, uh, the 1st of, of July, on Saturday. And it's an online community of people that are really coming from a different background and that are enthusiastic about building customized. And so I encourage you to check out their compass and also check out their website. And lastly, last week, we had a very successful workshop at VNSI 2023. So it's a very contentious conference uh, about the VNSI and the Thai world. And we had a conference there about open source PDK and EDA. And the, the, the room was really, very really crowded and we got very good interest. Which shows that some validation that the ecosystem uh, has successfully been constructed. So, what are the next steps for us? So, we want to help like other foundry, other entity, other industry, your partner to replicate our success. So, we want more MPW programming to, uh, to be created. We are one foundry to open source MPDK and we are happy to help with that. We also want to help other avoid the trap that we found along the way. We want to avoid them at the design misactivity, the packaging issue that we have, and like the issue around the maintenance of the PDK. We are also still invested as we learn, uh, to invest into high level synthesis to democratize code design. So like software engineer and hardware engineer working together on the product because that's what happened even inside Google Domain. And we are also willing to fund more reproducible CEO research. Because if you have an open source PDK, if you have an open source tool chain, and you have open source your design, it means that anybody, any other researcher can reproduce your research and build on top of your research. 
And so, like uh, Shigeta san from the University of Relation in Google is going to know talk about this problem. Uh, はい、え、じゃあ、ここで、スピーカーがありまして、Google え、して、あの、あの、天才の、え、計算に協力、あの、え、コミュニティの力を借りしながら、え、ライブとのコラボレーションというところが非常に大事であるというふうに考えています。で、またですね、少し変わったところでは、もう少し、え、研究領域を絞った、しましては、ま、え、アワードをインクルージョンリサーチというのがありまして、え、インクルージョンに例えばアクセシビリティの研究であるとか、え、構成のAI の研究です
まあ、今後ですけど、いきなり勉強手を挙げてくださいというよりは、ぜひあの Google のエンジニア、特にテクノロジーを分かっているものと話していただいて、あのそのチームが、じゃあどういうことに今関心があるのか、どういう研究領域が注力したいと思っているのかというのをぜひ聞いていただいてですね、でそ,のそこと自分の,あの研究の興味のところの、あのお互いにとって一番この研究領域が面白いだろうというところを一緒に考えていただいて、でそれをあの持ち込んでいただくと、あのあ、じゃあこれは Google と一緒にやる価値があるあ、Google と皆さんで一緒にやる価値があるってことになれば支援をしていくというような仕組みになってますので、ぜひあの、まあ、ここにジャンもいますし、この後ブースにもいると思うので、ぜひ話してもらって、どういう研究領域が楽しいのか、あのいいのかなというのをあの議論していただいて、検討していただければと思います。でその上で、まあ、ある意味、ジョイントのプロポーザルといいますか、一緒に考えてもらった研究提案というのをあの作って。大体7月末ぐらいを受けたときに考えてますけど、それぐらいまでに提案を作っていただければ、えー、その上で支援するかどうかというのを決定させてもらうというようなプロセスを考えています。であのどういう領域がいいのかというのは、ぜひぜひ直接話してもらえればとは思うんですけど、少し例を挙げさせてもらいますと、まあ、一つはこのオープンソースハードウェアのやり特にあのこういうコースハイレベルシンセシスであるとか。ハードウェアランゲージであるとか、そういったところっていうのが一番大きな注目になってますけど、あのそうですね、いろいろな、今一番こういう研究をしていて、こういうところが面白いと思いますというのを一緒に話していただいて、考えていただければと思っています。で、もう一つは、えー、モバイルやエッジデバイス向けのデバイスというところも関心を持ってまして、まあ、あの皆さんご存知のように、我々はピクセルフォンというスマホとも、台湾を中心に作ってますけど、台湾のチームとしては、まあ、それに関する研究というのをぜひ。あのサポートしたいというふうに考えていますので、そうした提案も考えていただければと思っています。はい、でというのが、まあ、主に今までのやつというのが、まあ、主に先生方の研究者方の向けだと思うんですけど、学生様のビジネスと、まあ、まず一つは、博士課程のフローシップというのを毎年、3月ぐらいから5月ぐらいにかけて募集しています。で、えー、っとですね、あとは、スチューデントリサーチャー、ある種のインターンなんですけど、研究プロジェクト向けのインターンというものも募集しています。でこちら、えー、通年いつでもあのうまく通れば常にいつでも始められますし、またパートタイムで参加するということもできるので、非常に柔軟なインターンのプログラムになってますので、参考した機会というのぜひ考えていただければと思っています。で、あとはですね、えー、最近、まあ、ルフィも高いと思うんですけど、スチューデントトラベルグラウンドというのもありまして、えー、旅行にあの国際学会に出席して発表しますよという学生の方がいらっしゃいましたら、こちらもあの通年で受け付けている。支援内容がありますので、オンラインフォームから参加していただくと、支援を出せる場合があるというようなことになっています。はい、というような感じで、さまざ、あ、まなプログラムをざっと紹介させていただきましたけど、まあ、私もここにいます、この後、ご質問いると思いますので、ぜひあのご相談ありましたら、あのシリコンリサーチプログラム等の案内があの受け取りたいことであれば、ぜひ、あの話、いや、以上に話しかけていただければと思います。では、えー、こちらで私、我々からの発表としてはご紹介になりますけど、えー、と<笑>あのご質問とあれば、どうなんでしょうか。<笑>